is huge in my opinion and i think this is really where the beef is going to start after hey what's up youtube and you guys already know what happened 50 cents scary response to drake dissing kendrick lamar using snoop and tupac's ai voices that's crazy i don't even know what's going on i'm trying to find out i'm, trying, I'm hearing so much shit. i'm checking my ig social media so let's just get into the video youtube chicks Get ready. You know what to do, chicks. So listen, chicks move. Hey, chicks move. Appreciate all the coverage that you He is not going to turn on his man, Drake. Especially not when his ops are on the other side. We've seen Rick Ross constantly attack Drake and also put out a diss record to his Drake. Today, Kanye West took his turn dissing Drake. If you guys haven't watched that video, please make sure you guys uh, go 50 don't that like. Now, last 50 doesn't... 50 does not like Rick Ross. We know this. Last night, Drake used the AI voices of Tupac and also Snoop Dogg to diss Kendrick Lamar. There's a lot of mixed reviews about it right now. Some of you guys like it. Some of you guys feel like Drake was corny using those AI voices, which is fair because everybody is entitled to their own opinion about it. For me, I'm definitely skeptic of it. I think it's an interesting play to use Drake to usher in AI into hip hop because if there's ever anybody that can do it and do it effectively, it will be Drake and nobody else. Now today, 50 Cent put out a very interesting message to Kendrick Lamar and also his reaction to the song. Okay. After listening to the Drake Kendrick Lamar this, 50 said, okay, in my professional expert opinion on this matter, leave this man alone. Hmm, interesting. I've seen this movie before. It will not end well. You disagree? Okay, then where's your shit at, boy? Now, this is one of the first times that we've kind of seen 50 pick a side here. Normally, his reactions have been pretty neutral, but he seems to be leaning to his Drake now. And keep in mind, this is someone who was the master of beef and diss songs during his time. Someone who at one point damn near had the whole industry against him. So he really means that shit when he says, in my professional expert opinion. Now, one of the most fascinating things about 50 Pick and Drake's side is that both Dr. Dre and also Eminem ride with Kendrick. And these are the two guys 50 essentially owes his career to. The two guys he will literally crash out over. So seeing him publicly pick a stance and a stance that is not aligned with the other people he's cool with there's gotta be something there now as far as kendrick you have got to put something out boy i'm sorry this cannot go on for much longer like drake said you can't let this go past he's not gonna let you nobody wants to wait until may when you're dropping your album to sneak in a record you've been asking for lyrical warfare ever since you came in the game and now the main guy is pretty much taunting you and clowning with you at this point you gotta do something and let me be honest record with you guys if Kendrick drops heat guess whose record I'm gonna big up all I want is just for these guys to spoil with each other I think us as hip-hop fans deserve that you guys get in the comments below so much you guys make a 50 cents reaction all right cool let's let's dive deeper because I dive deeper for real um let's go back because I must have seen this too so the secret behind the Drake this track too. So Drake actually Respond, dropped this track. The fans so. are going to tune in, leading to more streams and more sales. Beef has always been good for hip hop. It makes money. You get what I'm saying. Now in the track push ups, Drake definitely threw some nice little jabs at Kendrick. He made fun of his shoe size. He called him a pipsqueak. He says he's being extorted by his label, <laughs> saying he is just as much of a sellout rapper turned pop star as any other rapper who did pop records for money. And yeah, some good solid jabs. Cool. But there was one bar that is massively overlooked. Hugs and kisses, man. Don't tell me about no switches. I'll be rocking every chain I own next visit. I be with some bodyguards like Whitney. Top say drop your little. All right, all right, all right. Some bodyguards like Whitney. Top say drop your little. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> In Kendrick's track, he said, y'all better get the switches and that he's going to be snatching chains, to which Drake says, no, you're not. But the I be with bodyguards line like Whitney, it does obviously refer to Whitney Houston's 1992 film Bodyguards, but Whitney is also the name of Kendrick Lamar's fiance. Drake dragging Kendrick's Damn. fiance's name into this beef is huge in my opinion. And I think this is really where the beef is going to start. You have to remember that everything up until this point has pretty much just been about numbers 
who has the most sales, who's the most relevant, who has the most cultural dominance, who's big three. It's just been strictly competitive until now. I mean, even if you think back all the way to Kendrick's control verse where he dissed every relevant rapper in the game, including Drake, he said he had love for everybody, but he wanted to murder them and take their fans. But this was just for the sake of competition, which we all agree is good for hip hop. And even Kendrick's shots that he took on like that were pretty light and also strictly competitive. So Drake bringing up Kendrick's fiance, his family, is even a line that he thinks is taking it too far. Well, it wasn't even about battle rap or any of that. It was just the, the, the information was too shocking. It was, like I said, it was, it was a, on his part, it was a genius chess move. He obviously has no, like, you know, when it comes to me, he's not going to have any, like, morals or respect. So the other elements of the record, um, whether it be, like, just, like, the shit that he's making up about my mom and my dad and all this, like, dumb mm -hmm. shit. Or, uh, or, you know, obviously the part that, that hit me the most, which is, like, you know, wishing, like, that my friend that has an illness, like, dies. Uh, like, don't, that shit, to me, is just not really wavy. Like, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm just not really with that. Like, and when I did say, oh, there's rules to this, I didn't mean there's rules that anybody has to follow. Whether, whether there was information that didn't get revealed or not, the point is, like, I, there's just some unwritten rules in the sport for some people obviously yeah. not for him and that's fine you know there's a point where you're gonna want to stop rapping i'm sure i could say something about you know your lovely lady or you know a child or a family member and you're just gonna want to not really rap anymore yeah. so when pusha t brought up drake's family his child and his friend 40 who was unwell drake said that was too far he also admits that's how pusha won so wouldn't mentioning kendrick's wife by drake's own definition be too far it would which is why i think drake is being fully intentional here and he wants to poke the bear and see what kendrick is gonna do which in my opinion is really where the beef starts it starts at the mention of kendrick's fiance and things could get ugly from here like if kendrick responds to that line directly he might start wiling out exposing personal information again i don't think they're gonna be sliding on each other's blocks but no, it could, it could get a little messy. But if Kendrick ignores that line, then everyone can just kind of play it off and say, oh, that that Drake was never talking about his wife. That, that line was about hit Whitney Houston. It was just about bodyguards. Eh, whatever, forget about it. So it's definitely a strategic chess move by Drake. But ironically, the most overlooked mastermind in this entire beef is Metro Boomin. I believe he has the Metro biggest role Mother in this situation, but he Boomin. isn't really getting the attention because he's not a rapper and he can't technically respond. The only line Metro received in push-ups was, Metro, shut your hoe ass up and make some drums. But it's Yo. actually much deeper than that. It starts with Metro's tweet and delete rant about Drake. The Hip Hop All Day Twitter account was comparing the streams of Drake's Her Loss and Metro Boomin's Heroes and Villains. Her Loss is about 1.3 billion streams behind. Heroes and Villains currently getting 10 million streams a day. Her loss, 4 million. The gap is only going to widen. Then Metro Boomin chimed into the conversation and said, Yet Her Loss still keeps winning Rap Album of the Year over Heroes and Villains. Proof that award shows are just politics and not for me. I don't care about awards, honestly. The true award and reward is knowing that the music I spend so much time on brings joy to the people's everyday lives. What's so funny about these tweets Metro is that Metro is doing the exact boom. same thing that DJ Khaled was doing against Tyler the Creator. Tyler went number one, DJ Khaled went number two, and DJ Khaled was pissed. And everybody was like, shut up, DJ Khaled. You had everybody in the industry on that album, and you still couldn't compete with Tyler. But DJ Khaled based his argument off stream, saying, I make albums so people can play it, and you actually hear it. It's called albums that you actually hear the songs. Not no mysterious shit, and you never hear it. Like, dude, Shut up. Igor was just a great album, that's it. Metro is kind of doing the same thing here. He's mad about an award, not necessarily going number one, but Metro is an executive producer. DJ Khaled is an executive producer. The only difference is that Metro does have the capability and the ability to make amazing music himself and actually do the producing. And he didn't make some annoying video to post on social media, but I mean, Dante, you gotta back me up here. Like he's clearly pressed. Like he said, I don't even care about awards. Then why did you tweet about it, bro? You care. But then he deleted the tweet. So I guess that proves he doesn't care. And then Drake, a few months later, called him a tweet and deleter. The non-believers, the underachievers, the tweet and deleters. You guys make me sick to my stomach. stomach man. Honestly, you guys want to look at my eyes. You guys want to do something? 
2000. That's what I thought. So hear me out. Metro believes in his heart. Her loss robbed him of an opportunity to win a BET award or a Grammy or some other award. So it makes sense why he would drop another album that's not necessarily rushed, but I mean, Heroes and Villains dropped like 14, 15 months ago and he already has We Don't Trust You this year. Especially considering Drake said he won't be dropping any more music this year, maybe maybe metro is trying to drop an album and get the award that he thinks he deserves which would be so funny if drake just said eh, fuck it i'm gonna do a surprise album <laughs> and he drops an album that gets an award over metro again that would be diabolical okay if drake drops another album this year i think he watched this video because the ultimate troll to metro would be to drop another album and intercept metro's ability to get some award or get a grammy or something like that that would be that crazy. Oh, crazy additionally it was on we don't trust you that future took shots at drake he said on track number one you my number one fan dog sneak dissing i don't understand pillow talking acting like a fed i don't need another fake friend can't be about a hoe because we sharing in your feelings why you playing dog i know I, I didn't rap it all right i didn't rap it and the only reason we knew this was a diss at drake was because drake's opening line in push-ups was i could never be nobody's number one fan your first number one i had to put it in your hand which is true i mean Surprisingly, Future had like seven or eight number one albums, but he never had a number one single until he collaborated with Drake. I think it was way too sexy, which is like Future way deserved so many that. other number ones other than that. But regardless, it is true. But there really isn't that much history of beef between Future and Drake. Like they're kind of friends as far as we know. I mean, bloggers and YouTubers are now diving into the history and looking at all of these subliminal shots that may or may not be between these two. And there could be something there, but the only likely explanation that makes any sense is over a girl. And it's a really long story that's not worth getting into all of the details in my opinion, but the spark notes is essentially that Drake and Future allegedly have some beef over this girl who goes by the name Princess Diana. But then again, Future just said that the beef can't be about a hoe because they're sharing, which does prove that they have shared women in the past, but it doesn't really seem that strong. So Metro is clearly mad at Drake and Future might be lightly agitated or maybe Future is not particularly happy with the way that Drake and Metro's relationship has sort of panned out. So it's time to take sides. Is Future going to side with Metro or Drake? But you have to consider Metro's role here. He's an amazing producer. Some might even call him the best in hip hop. You can work with a great producer for your whole career, but you can't really have a partnership unless you're a duo with another rapper. Like if you're on Drake's side, what do you get? Okay, you get a feature and you get kind of the cultural relevance by being beside him. You might get a an Instagram tag or maybe you get a whole collab album. Future has all of that already from Drake. He got all of the benefits that you get from being Drake's friend in the industry, so kind of doesn't really need him anymore. Strategically, siding with Metro is better for the long term. Plus, who knows how close Drake and Future actually are as friends behind the scenes. Maybe Future was always using him for sales. But Future and Metro do have a long history together and they are from the same city. For Kendrick, the decision was easy. It was just let me jump on the number one producer's album and take a shot at the biggest rapper in the game. But Metro benefited heavily from both of these situations. Then add The Weeknd into the mix and Metro yet again benefited from that too. The Weeknd received some bars on push-ups as well. Firstly, Drake said that The Weeknd claims Toronto, but he isn't actually from there. Then he basically makes fun of The Weeknd's manager for paying Metro to put him on his most recent two albums, which as you know, The Weeknd does kind of stand out on Heroes and Villains and We Don't Trust You. It's like, all right, The Weeknd's a singer. He's not really a rapper. Like, He's kind of like the token singer on this projects, on these projects. But again, why would The Weeknd need to be on Metro's album? Well, you guys have to think with your business brain. Sure, The Weeknd is a pop star, but he still needs that hip hop coolness factor. He needs the approval of the hip hop community to remain on top even as a pop star. It's just a strategic marketing and branding decision. Like rappers just kind of have this cool factor that's difficult to explain. They usually have the most pop in Instagrams. They dress the nicest. They just have this cool aura or looming interest around them that people, our society are 
pop culture interest has just kind of given them? Why do you think Post Malone started with rap and then now drifted into pop and country? Why do you think Morgan Wallen wanted to collaborate with Lil Durk? Why do you think that pop stars want rappers to feature on their songs? Well, because they get this strong cultural cosign that is hard to quantify with dollars, but we all know that it exists. It's all right, cool. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Because I think this Drake beef is going to go crazy. Like, this Drake, Future, Metro, Kendrick. I'm here weekend too, like, the weekend. So, I don't know. Let me know. It's been your boy Zane. Peace.